My name is Frankie and I spent the last 30 days trying my hand at taking, uploading, and selling stock photography. I wanted to find out if a total amateur with no experience could earn passive income from stock photography because I often see it mentioned as a top passive income opportunity. In fact, I've actually recommended stock photography a time or two on my main channel, The Money Resolution. I took on this 30 day challenge to see if I could put my money where my mouth is or was, I guess. Today I'll share it all. How the photo taking went, my upload goal, what sites I chose to upload to, what went right and wrong, what I would have done differently, plus of course, did I make any money. By the way, 30 day passive income challenges is what I do here on the channel. Each month I take on a new passive income project from scratch and show you how it all went. So far I've taken on YouTube, investing online courses in now stock photography. Stick around until the end to see what I'm taking on for May, 2023 and subscribe so you don't miss out how it all goes. But let's dive in. Truth be told, I have always been interested in trying my hand at photography. Over the years, I often find myself going on walks just to take photos. I'm also the one on trips that probably takes way too many photos. I even love editing photos and putting them into digital or physical albums, or at least posting them, of course, on social media. And I was inspired to take on stock photography in April because we actually had a family vacation planned for Mexico. So I brought my Canon M50 camera that I actually used to film these videos with me and came home with about 550 photos. And after editing, I deemed close to 400 of those worth uploading. I didn't want my project to be a distraction on vacation. So each morning I got up before the sun and went on hour long walkabouts. I went all over the resort, the nearby beach, the golf club, the town, and more. I looked forward to this daily. It was in no way a chore since I wake up with or before the sun most days anyway. It was peaceful. I got steps in. I saw amazing sunrises, so zero complaints. By April 10th, when I got home, I was off to a great start and feeling super motivated. But then I quickly realized the fun part was mostly over. The real work was ahead of me. I won't cover all the process details here, but if you do want more, watch my mid-month update. But long story short, I had to edit each photo individually, then upload photos to two different stock sites, and I chose Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. Then I had to categorize, title, and tag every photo individually twice because of course they were on two different sites. Tagging was easily the most tedious part of the process. You can add up to 50 tags on each site per photo. So I figured it was best to add 50 tags for each photo. Luckily you can add and edit tags in bulk. Plus there are some AI tools for help, but it's still very tedious and extremely time consuming. In my mid month video, I said my goal was 1000 unique photos uploaded to both sites. Well, I lost steam after I spent almost a week in the edit and upload process and my new goal became 600 on both sites. Next, I ended up shooting around 100 photos in and around where I live in Tacoma, Washington and in nearby Seattle. Then I remembered I had 100 or so great photos from our honeymoon in Aruba. So that is how I got to 600 or at least pretty close. Now I didn't hit my goal of 1000 photos uploaded, but I was really proud of the effort overall and I did hit some other challenges. And I also failed to upload any stock video. I learned video is actually where the biggest opportunity is to make money, but it just didn't work out. I shot 30 plus 15 second videos on my trip and back home, but none of them felt good enough to submit. My mistake was not using a mini or a full tripod. So all my videos were really shaky and I didn't wanna edit and submit these low quality videos. Just not worth it. I said I submitted close to 600 photos twice, but how many actually got approved and accepted onto each of the sites? I'll start with Adobe Stock. This was a challenge. Of the 585 photos I submitted, only 32 got accepted. Yes, 32. Ouch. Adobe also took longer than Shutterstock to actually review. So 184 at the time of recording are still being reviewed in process and have been for over a week and a half. Plus Adobe doesn't provide any feedback. So I don't know what I was doing wrong most of the time. So technically 8% of my photos that have been reviewed got accepted. That means I should end up with close to or around 50 listed when the final batch is reviewed. Some entire batches, by the way, of 50 plus were fully rejected early on in the process. So that was pretty demoralizing and part of the reason I decided not to submit 1000 photos. Did I make money with my 32 photos 
on Adobe. Nope, zero, zip, zilch. Here are the photos I'll scan through that were accepted on screen. It has only been a couple of weeks, so there's still a chance I'll earn some money over time, but I can't imagine I'll be earning more than a few bucks a year. Based on my experience, I cannot recommend that you upload to Adobe, at least not as an amateur. You may have better luck, but as you can see, I didn't. But what about Shutterstock? I had a lot more success with Shutterstock. I apparently uploaded slightly less photos at 576. Of those, 260 were accepted. That is five times as many as Adobe, a 45% acceptance rate, and I am very happy with that. I also really appreciated how quickly Shutterstock reviewed the images, usually within 24 hours instead of five or six days or so on average with Adobe. Best of all, Shutterstock actually provides feedback for each photo that got rejected. And I wanna share some of that feedback so that you can learn and avoid my mistakes. First of all, you can't have any kind of trademark or intellectual property whatsoever. This photo got rejected for a visible brand name or logo, which I still haven't found, though I'm sure they're right. And graffiti, I learned, is considered intellectual property, which, okay, respect, I guess it should be. I was also told I was missing model releases from people and landmarks sometimes. Some photos got rejected for the main subject being out of focus, even though I thought it was intentional and artsy in my very amateur opinion. Some photos were flagged for needing an English translation, though I wasn't sure where you actually submit that. Some were under, over, or inconsistently exposed, and I'm not really sure what that last part means. Some photos were rejected for noise or artifacts in them. And finally, this is one of my favorite photos that I took last month but it was rejected because I gave it a bad title. Apparently, vacation travel in Loreto, Mexico wasn't descriptive enough, which I guess is fair. Most were only rejected for one reason, but a few bad apples reminded me how amateur I really am with three or more rejection flags. So in terms of Shutterstock, the only downside I see to uploading to the site is that I did frequently hit an upload cap, but I simply needed to wait 24 hours to submit more. I think it's around 100 uploads a day or so. And after I submitted my first 100 or so, I did see this message saying I should submit less as a best practice, so that's just something to keep in mind. But did I make money on Shutterstock during my 30-day passive income project? I actually did. I was so excited when I logged in on April 24th and saw that I had one download that was going to pay me 30 cents. I had one additional download in early May for 10 cents. And here are the two photos on screen. You can see I'm owed a whopping 40 cents, which isn't bad, at least not a complete and utter failure overall. But honestly, even if I made $0, it wasn't a failure because I had a ton of fun. Plus I have a ton of amazing photos from our trip. It got me out of the house when I got back home, I got exercise, I definitely improved and learned and gained some skills, and who knows, it might actually work out long-term with Shutterstock. Do I recommend stock photography? Yes, but only if you have realistic expectations. I also suggest that you consider Shutterstock and potentially some other sites, but not Adobe, as I've said. Have fun with it, focus on gaining skills, not money, and stick with quality, not quantity. Perhaps upload 20 or 25 of your very best photos to four or five sites and see what you learn and go from there. If you do want to actually earn money from stock, maybe avoid all the hassle that I just described and stick with stock video only. I think video is where you could really succeed, use a tripod, especially if you have people in them that are willing to sign model release forms. As someone who was always looking for a stock video for my YouTube channel, like this extremely random one on screen, I can tell you there's definitely high demand for stock video. Now that is a quick summary of a very long project. There is so much more that I could say and share, but I wanted to keep this tight and semi-short and to the point. If you are looking for more, do check out my last video I mentioned at the top. It was my mid-month update where I shared more about the project background, micro versus macro stock sites, why I chose the sites that I chose, my strategy, my process, and most importantly, I included seven tips that I recommend that will save you time and energy if you take on the same project. So let me know what you think about my April passive income project. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What did you learn? What are your thoughts on stock photography in general for passive income after watching this? And if you have succeeded in the stock space, 
please share a tip or two. I'd really appreciate it because I can definitely see myself uploading more in the future, but not in May. And that's because I'm on to a new passive income project. But here's the truth. I need your help. I can't decide between three options, Etsy templates, Medium, which is a writing site, and creating audiobooks or money from audio in general. So give me your vote or idea in the comments and subscribe so that you see what I take on next. You are the best for watching until the end. My name is Frankie and I appreciate your time and attention. On to the next one. Hopefully it's a little bit more successful. I hope to see you soon. Thanks.